Coming up, city police continue their search for a man who sexually assaulted and robbed a woman downtown. And two men are indicted in the kidnapping of an elementary school student. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Cassandra Massey. And I'm Chandler Wilkerson. A man seen in surveillance video connected to the assault and robbery of a woman downtown last week remains at large today. The woman was robbed and raped in the Lowndes County Governmental Center as she, after she parked her car early in the morning. Valdosta police say they've made one arrest in an attempt to locate the offender, but are still having trouble identifying him. Undercover operations have been conducted to find the man, but at this time, investigators say that they aren't able to make a positive identification. Now they're asking for the public for its help. Anyone with information in this case should contact police and can leave an anonymous tip at 229-293-3091. An indictment has been made in the case involving the alleged abduction of a child from an elementary school in Lowndes County. Michael Ray McCoy and David Scott Stapp were indicted last week by a grand jury in Lowndes County. Both were charged with kidnapping, criminal attempt to commit a felony, and disrupting a public school. The Lowndes County Sheriff's Office says it arrested McCoy and Stapp during their attempt to kidnap McCoy's child on August 14th. According to reports, McCoy is a non-custodial parent. A court date has not been set for the trial at this time, but the two are currently out of jail on bond. Last Wednesday, firefighters at the Valdosta Fire Department were busy responding to two fires within the same day. Fire personnel arrived on the scene of Claudia Circle, where a single-family dwelling fire was started by unattended cooking. The fire extended from the kitchen out to the carport, creating $20,000 in damages. Fourteen firefighters rushed to the scene and were able to extinguish the fire. No one was injured during. In addition to the cooking fire, a structure fire on Morningside Drive was quickly extinguished by the Engine 3 crew. The fire started in the living room area of the structure. The cause of the fire and the vacant and condemned structure has not yet been determined. There were no injuries to fire personnel. More than 100 arrests were made over the weekend in roadblocks by deputies of the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. Lowndes County deputies, Georgia State, Georgia State Patrol Troopers, and members of the Georgia Governor's Office of Highway Safety worked together to conduct the roadblock, roadblock checks throughout Lowndes County at 15 different locations Friday and Saturday. 21 people were arrested for driving under the influence Friday night, and 15 more DUI arrests were made on Saturday. 115 more drivers were arrested for a variety of other charges. Valdosta the police have arrested a woman following a domestic dispute last Tuesday night in the 2400 block of Oxford Drive. Officers reported they charged 56-year-old Brenda Howell with aggravated assault, family violence after she allegedly cut a man with a knife, a knife during a fight. Howell said the man punched her in the face and the man said he was trying to get the knife away from her. Howell was placed in the Lowndes County Jail. Police said the man's injury were not life-threatening. As the holiday season begins, the Valdosta Police Department is encouraging the public to be cautious and safe. The police are encouraging citizens to never leave their cars unlocked, even at home. Citizens are also encouraged to park in well-lit areas and not leave anything in plain sight inside of their vehicles. Other tips include being alert, parking near large groups of cars, locking your car doors as soon as you enter your vehicle, protecting your purse or wallet, and not carrying a large amounts of cash or an excessive amount of debit or credit cards. These are a few holiday safety tips from your Valdosta Police Department. When we return, we'll tell you about the third annual Christmas Bazaar. And the Valdosta Lowndes County Parks and Recreation Authority's deadline for the holiday decorating contest is approaching. Stay tuned. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. 
VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. Welcome back to News Valdosta. An ankle art showcase event has helped local artists in the area by branching out with information about social services. The 30 vendors will showcase Saturday morning at the Valdosta Senior Citizens Center for the third annual Christmas Bazaar. Sarah Bell, owner of the Pink Door Art and Stuff consignment shop, began the event in 2013 as a way to help local artists, folk artists, Sandy and seamstress and painter Ashanti Thompson, both from the Atlanta area, brought dozens of their artwork pieces to the bazaar. For this year's event, Belle said she wanted to branch out into providing information about area social services. This Friday is the registration deadline for the Valdosta Lowndes County Park and Recreation Authority's Homes for the Holidays House Decorating Contest. The Homes for the Holidays Contest is a fun event where people decorate their houses in the holiday spirit and will be judged for the decorations. The judging will take place on December 11th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Children wishing to judge in the competition must also be registered by Friday. For more information on the event, please go online to the VLPRA.com. Wiregrass Technical College has nominated 20 of their students for the Georgia Occupational Award of Leadership competition. The purpose of GOAL is to spotlight the outstanding achievement by students in Georgia's technical colleges and to emphasize the importance of technical education in today's global workforce. The student judged most outstanding will be, des will be, will be des designated as the college's gold winner and move on to the regional competition in March at Southern Regional Technical College at the Tifton campus. With the winter season and holidays approaching, some of us will be around family and in a warm house, but not everyone is that fortunate. Want to help out the homeless and community with food, love, and a warm place to stay? LAMP will give you that opportunity to donate your time or anything that you can give. Last year, they housed 368, and hopefully they will help be helped out even more. If you would like to volunteer, contact Gail Marine, or if you would like to donate, contact Sam McCord at 229-245-7157. We'll take another short break, but when we get back, we'll take a look at our weather forecast with Mark Mongel. So stay with us. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Peace. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Here, we are a community of 11,000 individual stories. A place where all doors are open. You're home away from home. Where you will make lifelong connections. And you will never feel invisible. Here, you will write it, research it, sing it, broadcast it, share it. Serve it. Teach it. Nurture and own it. VSU. Over 100 majors, championship athletics, and just far enough away from home. 
Find out what VSU can do for you. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Thanksgiving weather was great, but will it continue? Let's take a look at our weather with Mark Munjaw. Mark? Thanks, guys. The weather in Valdosta has been nice, and for the most part, it looks to not be changing much. Diving into today's forecast, we're starting with strong. We're starting strong with a high of 80 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Our, precip our precipitation readings are at a zero today, so you can keep your umbrellas at home. Today we should be experiencing mild winds topping at three miles per hour. For tonight, you're going to want to put on something a bit warmer as it, it, it's expecting to drop to a low of 65 degrees. Not exactly cold, but might be a good night for a sweatshirt. Jumping into tomorrow's forecast, we are looking at cloudy skies with a 10% chance of rain. Tomorrow is expecting to be around 81 degrees. Again, not much on the winds, but we can expect a bit of humidity increase. Around 78% is our current reading. The UV index will be at a lower rating than usual due to the cold. We will have a 4 out of a 10 on the scale today. Today's pollen count is extremely low at only a 1.2 on the scale, again to, due to the low temperatures. It's safe to say that not much allergy medicine will be in use today. That's all for the forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Mark. When we come back, we'll check in with our sports anchor, Elizabeth Tate. So don't go away. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean... I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back. The Thanksgiving holiday weekend led to many different sport outcomes. Let's go to Elizabeth Tate to find out more. Thanks guys. It was a big weekend for the Valwood Valiants. The Valiants won the GISA Class AAA State Championship against the Deerfield Windsor Knights at the Mercer University Stadium this past Saturday night. The game was a close one with a score of 28 to 26. The Knights missed a last second 30 yard field goal giving the victory to Valwood. The Valiants closed out their season with a 12 to 2 record and a four game win streak. Another heart-stopping matchup ended unfavorably for the Valdosta State football team on Saturday as the Blazers came up short in a 27-20 round two playoff loss to the West Georgia Wolves. The Blazers struggled to find their footing in the game and fell behind 10-0 early in the second quarter. Valdosta State never led in the contest until the fourth quarter when the Blazers took a 20-19 lead on a two-yard completion from E.J. Hillard to Cedric O'Neal. It was a lead that led for just two minutes as the Wolves came back with an equally strong play. With the loss, Valdosta State seasons comes to an end with a 9-3 record. In basketball news, the Lowndes Vikings will host the Hamilton County Trojans in a non-conference game tonight at 7.30. The Vikings have started out strong beginning in the season with 3-1. They, however, are still looking for that first home win as all of their wins have been on the road. The Trojans are 1-1 one and one on the season, with their only loss coming from the Lowndes crosstown rivals, the Valdosta Wildcats. The Valdosta Wildcats boys basketball team was in action on Saturday as they were matched up against Mariana. 
The Wildcats unfortunately came up short, losing 68 to 63 and dropping to 2 and 4 overall on the season. The Cats will look to regroup before they take on the non-conference opponent Pelham on the road this Friday at 7:30. Second half shooting led to the demise of the Valdosta State women's basketball team on Sunday afternoon as the Nova Southeastern Sharks beat the Lady Blazers 70 to 58. The loss marked the first of the season for the Valdosta State and dropped the Lady Blazers to 4 and 1 overall. In the game, NSU trailed 24 to 21 at the halftime but took their first lead of the afternoon in the third quarter. The Lady Blazers must now shift their focus to the Gulf, Gulf South Conference, beginning with North Alabama, who comes to town this Thursday uh, for a 6 p.m. matchup in the complex at Valdosta. Despite the women's loss, the Valdosta State Complex was on fire last night during the men's basketball game. The Blazers beat the Mariners of Coastal Georgia 84-70. The Mariners took an early lead at the complex, but Valdosta quickly caught up and took over the lead. Valdosta State continued to spread their lead throughout the remainder of the first half and led by 10 at the break. They continued to pull away in the second half with help from senior Blake Justice, who opened up the second half by scoring a three-point shot at the 18-minute mark. The Blazers controlled the game and led by as many as 20 points midway through the half. The Valdosta State's men's basketball will play against the Lions of North Alabama at the 8 p.m. Oh, 8 p.m. at the complex. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Elizabeth. After the break, we'll learn how, about how to celebrate the holidays in a fun and festive way. So don't go away. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We're back with news about our stuff. Are you ready for this year's Christmas parade? Well, it's coming up this weekend. Mayor John Gale invites everyone to the Christmas tree lighting on the front lawn of the City Hall on Friday night. St. John's Catholic School Choir will be performing and Santa will be making a special appearance as well. Refer refreshments will be served and if you'd like to donate, a table will be set up for the Parkwood Development Center. Thanks for watching our program today. I'm Cassandra Massey. And I'm Chandler Wilkerson. Join us again tomorrow for more local news.